Okay, for lesson 12.2, for lesson 12.2, we're going to be looking at arithmetic sequences. You've seen them for many, many years, probably in the context of filling in patterns. Like if I gave you 6, 10, 14, uh, next you'd say obviously the next term in the pattern would be 18. It certainly appears that to find our next term, we would just add... Four, that is known as an arithmetic sequence. Uh, when the difference between successive terms is always the same number, like 10 minus 6 was a 4, 14 minus 10 was a 4, uh, the sequence is called arithmetic. And the number that you actually are going to add from term to term to term is called the common difference, the common difference called D. So we can define this recursively by saying, remember, the recursive uh, setup would say, let's begin with something, call our first term some value. In this example, a sub 1 would have been 6, you would have seen right here. And then you'd say, to find your nth term, go to your previous term and add that fixed number. So, you know, if you look at the example that we started with, very plain and simply, uh, this right here would be a recursive defined sequence. Begin at 6, and then to find your nth term, go to your previous term and add 4. Okay? Uh, and again, D is known as the common difference. And of course, if you're always adding the same constant to subsequent terms to get your next, you're going to notice that for your first term, you are right here. For your second term, you added a common difference. For your third term, you added another common difference. For your fourth term, you added yet another one. But notice this pattern. For your fourth term, how many common differences did you add? Three. Huh. But for your third term, how many common differences did you add? Two. And you could say, oh, for my second term, I added just one. Uh, so, of course, what we're seeing is if you had a fifth term, you might have even guessed what that would be, a sub 1 plus 4d. Well, here we have an explicit formula. And the explicit formula is very powerful because it's going to say to find your nth term, start off with your first term, but notice what's happening. You know, when we had our fifth term, we had four common differences. So if you have your nth term, you'll have n minus 1 common differences. So look at this. Memorize this formula right here. Oh, my goodness. It's going to come to your aid time and time again. The nth term of an arithmetic sequence is the first term plus n minus 1 times your common difference. And with no further ado, we could actually take a look at, you know, a, an example where we have specifics. We can say, oh, you know, my first term here appears to be a 2. Uh, what are we adding to each term, does it look like? 4. Our, our common difference appears to be a 4. And indeed it is. You can see, you know, 2 plus 4 is 6, 6 plus 4 is 10, and so on. And they're saying, oh, would you find the 41st term of the arithmetic sequence? Yike. Uh, you really don't want to continue this pattern, adding 4 all the way out to a 41st term. What you're really saying is n is 41. I'm trying to find my 41, 41st term. You'd say, go to your first term. Well, that is a 2. And if n is 41, 41 minus 1, of course, is just going to be a 40. And then we're going to multiply that by 4. By the way, I think so very often we just immediately just write a 40 right in there. 4 times 40 is 160. And you add a 2, would you look at that? Right now, you could find whichever term was asked for. Okay, is that making sense, I hope? All right. Oh, that's pretty neat. 
Number two actually goes a little bit in a different venue. It, they're not telling you the first term. They're not giving you this wonderful list where you can just glance and say, aha, I see what I'm adding. I can see my common difference just immediately. Everything's a little bit more cryptic, if you would. They're saying, oh, yeah, the eighth term is 75, and way out somewhere the 20th term is 39. Hey, find the first term, the common difference, and the nth term. And I think sometimes kids are a little taken aback. But listen, if you know this formula, the one that we should memorize, my goodness, you could say, well, the eighth term is 75. The eighth term is 75. So what I can do is say n is equal to 8. And a sub 8 is 75. My first term, I do not know. Sad to say. Uh, but if n is 8, what's n minus 1, guys? It's 7. And at first, we're a little disappointed. You think, well, that wasn't very helpful. I still don't know my first term. I still don't know my common difference. I have two unknowns. Uh, but there's more information. They're telling you the 20th term. A sub 20 is 39. That means N is 20. And I can very quickly use the exact same formula and say, well, if my 20th term is 39, I still don't know my first term. But if N is 20, what's N minus 1? It's just 19. And again, at first glance, you look at this and you think, well, my word, how is that helping? Two equations, two unknowns. Let's rewrite these problems. Maybe reversing the left and the right side. And bring this over here. And if you remember elimination and substitution from Algebra 1, and I know you guys do, you'll say, hey, I could finish this up very quickly. So, you know, essentially we could subtract the equations, right? But tell you what, in the language of elimination, how about I take my second equation and multiply by negative 1. Sometimes kids will say, isn't that really just subtracting? Yeah, I guess you could say that. I think what can scare kids sometimes is when they see what's about to happen. Here's 12D and negative 39 minus 75. Kids can get very upset. They'll say that's something negative. Yeah, yeah, you bet it is. And it's uh, negative what? 36. Please never hit the panic button if you get a number that's not divisible by the quantity on the other side. It's possible that your common difference is negative, as we're about to see. It's possible our common difference is a fraction. You know, sometimes kids would cross something out and say, no way, my common difference can't be a decimal or a fraction. Of course it could. Of course it could. And look at this. You could say, well, my common difference is negative 3. Choose one of these equations, maybe the smaller one with the D, so that you can find A sub 1. A sub 1, let's see, 7 times negative 23 is negative 21. Add 21 to both sides, and you'll be at 96. Wow. So usually kids are like, okay, I think I've got this. Uh, but now we'd like to find our nth term. Sometimes kids will almost think nth term. Isn't that coming from that very famous formula? Yep. You've got 96 plus n minus 1 times negative 3. I'll tell you the truth. If you write this, that would be sufficient. The author might clean it up by distributing and combining like terms. But in all truth, this is the nth term.
Okay. We doing okay with that first part, part A? Part B is even simpler. You see, part B, they're saying, hey, give a recursive formula. Recursive, you have to start somewhere. You have to say, what's your first term? Well, my first term is 96. What do you think our uh, rest of the recursive formula would look like? A sub n is a sub n minus 1, then what? Plus negative 3. To get to your next term, wherever you are, just add negative 3. In essence, subtract 3. And then you're good. You guys doing all right? Let's go to the back. When you're finding the sum of an arithmetic sequence, you're really working with an arithmetic series. The phrase series means take your sequence and add up however many terms are asked for. So you can get that pattern that we just had. You know, the first example we dealt with, I think we found the 41st term. Uh, in a series, they'd say, add up the first 41 terms. Add them all up. So you might wonder, are there some formulas to help you do that? Yes. Once again, these you really do want to commit to memory. Uh, this right here is a nice form uh, that does not require the nth term, a sub n. I'll tell you the truth. The bottom one is actually the more popular one. That's the one that's usually given first. And it's credited to Carl Friedrich Gauss. I will talk a lot more about that. We're making a video. I wouldn't have time to, to show you what Gauss did as a young child, which is just mesmerizing when, when you see it. He was absolutely brilliant. But look, if you want to add up all the terms up to the nth term, add your first term and your nth term, multiply it by n, and then divide by 2. You're good to go. You might think, how is this second formula related? Well, didn't we really have a nice formula for a sub n? a sub n, you might say, well, you told us to memorize that a sub n was a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. Hey, what's a sub 1 plus a sub 1? It's 2 a sub 1. You see, it, it follows very nicely, beautifully, once you know that is a fact. Wow. So let's see where we're going here. Let's do a few of these and see how it all plays out. Add up the first 46 terms of the sequence. Uh, we've got form 1 and we've got form 2. Uh, any ideas what might be a little bit easier to work with, form 1 or form 2? I would say form 1 because I don't know what my 46th term is. You see what I'm saying? I don't know what my last term in that expansion would be. So if I had that, I would say, look, you want me to add this up. It's n over 2 times 2 times the first term plus n minus 1 times d. Let's get some help. Obviously, n's 46. What's my first term here? A 2. What's my common difference here? Negative 3. It looks like I keep subtracting a 3. So look, S of 46 would be 46 over 2. 2 times 2. 46 minus 1 is 45. And guys, the rest of this problem, you just have to work all that out. 46 divided by 2 is 23. This is a 4. And uh, my gosh, I believe this is negative 135, if I'm not mistaken. Negative 3 times 45, I think that's right. Add a 4, and you'd get negative 131. And uh, hey, with the calculator, that's no big deal. 23 times negative 131. And you get uh, negative 3,013. 